to the koalas, kookaburras, goannas, kangaroos, crickets and plants of the forests recently destroyed. Written from a place of both sincere regret, apology and love. Sorry, it's actually been a while since I've read this piece. On behalf of the collective human conscience that promises we will work hard to restore your homes, this piece is for you. <laughs> There's so many things that stand out about that point in history. Um, I remember how smoke-filled the air was for weeks and keeping the kids home. Who would have thought that would have been our introduction to, to home learning? And we were very lucky here not to be directly impacted by the fires, but living in a small community, you can't help but be touched by the devastation, both on the people and of course to our to our natural surroundings. And there was one story that really stood out to me. I had gone into the psychology clinic and that afternoon walked out and I just remember everybody had been talking about it, but the sky was just blood red and we were referring to it like Armageddon Day. I know the similar things happened down the coast as well, but, but there was a call I received at lunchtime and it just will forever play in my mind of a client who lived on a property and she was safe, the fires weren't so close to her property, but they could see them in the distance. But she was really distressed because she'd gone out the front of her property and she'd found her little daughter, her six-year-old, um, out the front, sort of scavenging around. She said, sweetie, what are you doing? And her daughter turned around to her and said, mom, the koalas, what are they gonna eat? I'm gathering gum leaves. And she was just so upset. She rang me and she said, I just don't know what to say to her. And I remember very distinctly just my heart filling with joy um, and saying to this mum, you just have four simple words you need to ask. And it's how can I help? Because there will be time for grief and the tears will come and there will be tough conversations. But right now your one job is to nourish the hope and the empathy and the compassion that your little girl is showing because that's what's going to make the difference and that's what's going to create change. <laughs> and to me, that little girl represents everything that we need to collectively gather among us to make that change that we still need to see. And revisiting the work that we did back in 2019 with Singularity U around this time, you know, before we all stepped into that future that has now so quickly come upon us, that message has never been more relevant. You know, our young people don't just deserve our support. They don't just deserve our encouragement. They need the skills that will equip them to be able to deliver the purpose that sits within them. And it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to be serving the next gen in that way. So I invite you to join us as we rewind and take a look at the work that was done back before this new normal was a thing. Impact into 2020 and beyond. Oh.